Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Buckeye Weekly Podcast. I am Tony Gerdeman here as always with Tom or Tom. How's it going? Tony, I'm waiting. Kind of going, kind of going about the same as it was the last time we recorded a show. Still, still waiting. How about you? Are you, are you also still waiting? I am also still waiting. Maybe by doing this show right now, maybe we can induce a commitment. Like maybe this is what gets it. You know, when, when news breaks during the show or like right after we were, we record, uh, maybe, maybe we can get this JTT thing done and, uh, then, then finally get to talk about it. That's, that's the thing. It's like, you can't, I mean, <laughs> we're just wanting to talk about it and we can't because nothing is happening. So there's nothing to talk about. Uh, but once he commits, then there'll be more to talk about depending on where he commits. Well, and it's funny that you mentioned JTT because we we're doing a listener question show today. And the first question, in fact, is about JTT. And it's from Dave Bucknut. It says, I keep hearing news about some kid named JTT. Can you tell me anything about him? I can't find anything on him. Well, uh, we know he's from the Washington area. And Ohio State really does pretty well in the D.C. area. You, you got uh, you got Chase, Chase Young out of there. You know, that whole DMV area where uh, JTT is from, right, Tom? Is that the, is that the correct Washington or is that? Uh... I, I thought we were talking about Jonathan Taylor Thomas, the kid from Home Improvement. Was that, was that not the JTT he was asking about? Because oh. I, I, I may have done a lot of research about the wrong topic then. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Well, Sorry. you know what? Let's not let it go to waste, Tom. Uh, what do you got for us on Jonathan Taylor Thomas? Well, uh, he was on Home Improvement. Um, his last name is actually Jonathan Taylor Weiss, which, um, seems like he's living in a house of lies to change his name to Jonathan Taylor. Maybe he isn't John JTT. Maybe this isn't the real JTT. Maybe if the question was JTW, um, I would have been had the right thing. So I apologize. I apologize for listening, wasting everyone's time. Uh, Again, I'm assuming Wikipedia is correct, which, you know, when has it ever not been? Well, you have to be a, a specific person to be able to edit Wikipedia. Yeah, they don't just let anybody do that. Right. No, sir. No, sir. You have to be somebody. You can't just be anybody. You got to be somebody. Uh, yeah, if, if you're looking for in- information on, on uh, let's say, jt 2 Maloa, BuckeyeScoop.com. I mean, there, there's all kinds of stuff. There's a, a crazy thread going on right now with 130-some thousand views and over a thousand replies. I guarantee you, even if you're not looking for something in that thread, you'll find it. Like, it's like the junk drawer of threads at this point. You didn't even know. Oh, that's where my tape measure went. Oh, that's where the AA batteries went. Oh, how'd my TV remote get in here? All of these, I, we, all of these, uh, what are the, the box tops for education? We, yes. we, I, I'm still fishing box tops for education expired in 2013 out of our junk drawer. It's like, what, how is this still in here? I don't understand. I well, guess, I guess, I guess we didn't turn these in. Whoops. <laughs> All of my Pepsi challenge caps are in there right now. So, you know, I'm still waiting on the A. Mm, we'll see. Mm. I've got hope. One of these days. <laughs> Next one um, from Trenton U15. Uh, who do you guys believe has a longer tenure, Al Washington or Marcus Freeman at Notre Dame? That's a good question because Marcus Freeman's next job is probably as a head coach. There's nowhere to go right now as a defensive coordinator. Because he's already at a specific place. I don't think the head coach, I don't think he's going to get the bump up at Notre Dame. Although, you know, Brian Kelly is only 59 years old, but he's like 86 in blood vessel years. <laughs> so he could step down at any point. But, you know, the, the, uh, the Marcus Freeman, I see him, he could probably be a head coach after this year. Al Washington, I think he's going to be around Ohio State a little bit longer than that. He may have to get a, a co-defensive coordinator boost. Uh, but I, I think after the the dalliance with Tennessee this past year and it not going all that well, I don't know how um, how Al Washington felt about that or just if there is some bad taste in the mouth about just going through that experience. So I think – I think uh, Al Washington will be around longer than Marcus Freeman. What do you say? Yeah, I, I guess. I mean, it doesn't say in his current position. So I guess, you know, there's, there's a possibility he moves up to a yeah, co-defensive coordinator position, something like that. Marcus Freeman, you know, I mean, I think the, the vibe was he was probably the head coach in waiting at Cincinnati and got tired of waiting at Cincinnati because Luke Fickle may not be going anywhere. So 
you know, does Marcus Freeman leave for a low level Big Ten job to be the go be the head coach at I, I don't know what's what's gonna open in a year. Uh I, I I don't I think most of the Big Ten has turned over. You know, maybe maybe Minnesota opens up if J T if uh DJ Fleck goes somewhere, maybe. But it feels like most of the places that have turned over recently are the ones that were maybe, you know, that you would think, hey, maybe this place will turn over. So maybe Purdue opens if they have a disastrous year this year, maybe. Former DC at Purdue. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a possibility, but yeah. I, I guess I'll go with Al Washington, but I, I don't know that I see either of those guys jumping real imminently. Well, could he go to a you know a Buffalo or a Memphis or just take kind of a, a big step back because you know it, it's if you want to be the head coach, I just think at this point maybe I'm going to change my answer here. The longer you stay at Notre Dame, the better job you'll get, and what you know you can show more like. Greg Schiano was a defensive coordinator at Ohio State. Now, granted, he was a past head coach, but he could have landed, he did land the Tennessee job. And I don't think that's out of the realm of possibility for a guy like Marcus Freeman. Shoot, maybe the Tennessee job. <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe something like that opens and it's you know, kind of a gamble, maybe. But I don't, I think in the coaching profession, I don't know that he's viewed as a gamble. No, I don't. I don't think he's viewed as a gamble. I think he's viewed as more or less a sure thing at this point. Young, energetic, good recruiter, good ties to a good program in Ohio and a talent-rich area in Ohio. He, I mean, Notre Dame's last defensive coordinator, Clark Lee, is now the head coach at Vanderbilt. So, you know, that's a, that's a spot you can jump to a low-level kind of Power Five gig right away. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like at this point, like the Brian Kelly to the NFL rumors have kind of popped up every two years when Brian Kelly needs a, a contract extension. I think at this point, it's like, okay, I don't, I don't think we need to believe those anymore. I think Brian Kelly's agent may just be earning his, uh, his percentage with those. But, you know, I, I don't see Marcus Freeman taking a Mac job. Like, I think if Mark Fre Marcus Freeman wanted to take a Mac job, he was the head coach in waiting at a job better than a Mac job. So he's probably looking for a power five job. So, you know, like a Purdue type job or, you know, I mean, I'm just going back. Mike Sanford was, I think a position coach at Notre Dame when he took the Western Kentucky job. He's probably Marcus Freeman's probably looking at a better gig than that. Pitt maybe if Pat Narduzzi goes, I mean, Pat Narduzzi has to be, I mean, like at some point that's got to go somewhere or not. Mm -hmm. So maybe like a pit type job. You know, You've mentioned I, I, a, a Purdue type and a Pitt type. What if Jim Harbaugh gets fired after the season? Michigan is very much a Purdue <laughs> Pitt type. Marcus Freeman, an Ohio State graduate, a, a, an alum, a Buckeye linebacker. That's a pretty plum job. And, and you, I, I don't think you can turn it down just on the basis of where you went to college. No, I don't think he would turn that down based on, on the where he went to college. I think, I don't think he would be their first choice. I think they would probably be looking at a Matt Campbell. I don't know if Matt, I mean, maybe Matt Campbell takes it. I don't know if Matt Campbell needs to take it, but you know, here, here's another possibility. Uh, what's his name at, at Louisville has ticked everyone off uh, already job shopping. I can't remember his name. It's not Steve Cragthorpe, but he's having a tenure. That's only marginally Similar. more, only marginally more successful than Steve Cragthorpe. Satterfeld. There. Yeah. Scott Satterfeld. He's kind of ticked a bunch of people off at Louisville. So if they have a down year, maybe he gets canned. Jeff That's Brom takes one. that job. And then the Purdue job opens up for Marcus Freeman. That, you know, I, I think something like that is probably in the works where it's not, you know, he's not getting the Michigan job. He's probably not getting the Notre Dame job if Brian Kelly decides tomorrow that he's done. But, you know, a, a Louisville slash Purdue type ACC, Big Ten, you know, pit kind of job, like something in that range seems about right for him. It, it could be next year. I just, I, I tend to think you're probably going to stay for a couple of years, probably. So, Halfly. It, yeah. I mean, it's, it's certainly possible. It is certainly possible. So, yeah. And, and, you know, if Jeff Halfley takes a, takes a better job somewhere, that's a possibility. You know, that BC could open up. I, I don't, I don't know that Marcus Freeman's necessarily a natural fit at BC. He doesn't have any kind of East Coast ties at all that I'm aware of. But, you know, I mean, that's, that's the level of program you're probably looking at getting a head coaching job at. Al Washington as a position coach is looking at more of a, you know, power five DC level job or a, maybe a Mac head coaching job, you know, Sean Lewis jumped somewhere 
uh, you know, he's the Kent State head coach. So Sean Lewis gets the Purdue job and then Al Washington goes to Kent State. Like that's a possibility too. And I do think Al Washington probably would make a pretty fantastic head coach, um, you know, whenever he's ready to make that leap. But yeah, I, I think I could see either one of those guys moving in the next couple years if the right position opened up. But I, I don't know that I have a real strong opinion on which one has a longer tenure. Well, if you're a Mac school and you're going to pick from, you have your pick of Ohio State assistant coaches, and I don't know that they do. Where does Al Washington rank on that list? I assume Brian Hartline is in there. You're probably not going to look at Kerry Combs. You're probably not going to look at Larry Johnson. Larry Johnson's not going to go anywhere. Mm-hmm. Kerry Combs, I don't know if at this point he wants to be a head coach. Tony Alford has looked at, you know, he, he's been looking. There's, you know, he could be a very um, effective and promising leader that I think might interest him. We know Kevin Wilson has wanted to get back into head coaching. Hasn't happened yet. I, I think there's some other possibilities other than Al Washington, but the question was about Al Washington. So mm-hmm. I guess we don't need to, to stray from that. But if Jeff Halfley leaves, I don't know that Al Washington, who was at BC, uh, I believe played at BC. I don't know that he's ready for a job like that quite yeah, yet. That, yeah, that's, that's probably like one level up from where I would expect him to be. I'd, I'd expect, you know, if, if it's Al Washington or Matt Barnes, maybe Tony Alfred, like a group of five levels gig. You know, I mean, Tony Alfred was a, is a Colorado State alum. He was kind of named in, in connection with that Colorado State job to give to Steve Adazio. I probably would have given that job to Tony Alfred rather than Steve Adazio, but I don't get a vote. Uh, you know, but, you know, Heartline, um, you know, Heartline, I don't know if Heartline would take a Mac head coaching job. He seems perfectly happy where he is. Al Washington, I think Al Washington would be a dynamite Mac level head coach right away. You know, go go take over. You know, I, I'm, I'm just going to speculate out loud here. I bet Akron's open a year from now. Just going to speculate out loud. Al Washington might do well with, you know, young, energetic African-American coach in an urban campus. That might be something that, that, you, you could really turn into something, you know, take a pretty big leap. I mean, that, that program is deep down in a hole right now. So you got some digging to do, but they have a nice new stadium. You have, you know, you've got some facilities there you can work with. There's talent in Northeast Ohio. You could, you can make that work potentially. And Kent State is, you know, Sean Lewis has Kent State at an abnormally high level. Uh, historically, that is typically one of the most difficult jobs in the entire nation to stay good at consistently. You know, Daryl Hazel had one 11 year win, one 11 win year there and just bolted for Purdue and they went right back in the toilet after that. So that's that is not an easy place to win consistently. So if you're Akron, you have an opportunity to hire someone like Al Washington. He comes in. You can you know, if Sean Lewis leaves, you can kind of pass your pass your big rival for the I think they play for the wagon wheel trophy. If I do remember correctly, I'm pretty sure I remember my rivalry trophies in the Mac correctly. I think they play for the wagon wheel, but. Regardless, those, those campuses are only about I don't know, 15, 20 minutes apart. They're big rivals. So, yeah, if they, uh, you know, th- that is an opportunity for Akron where you're, you're digging up from the basement, but you got, you know, you got room to improve and, and your rival school may be headed the other direction when their coach leaves. So there's, there is actually an opportunity there. Well, and not just when the coach leaves. I, I think Dustin Crum, their outstanding quarterback, is a, he's a senior now. And I don't know, he probably still has another year if he wants it, but when the talent leaves, it's amazing. Cause the same thing happened with Hazel when he lost his running backs, like Dre Archer, I think. And, and another mm-hmm. one, it's like, well, you're no longer as good of a coach when you go to Purdue because you don't <laughs> have those players. Uh, but yeah, I, I think uh, I'll still go without Washington. We'll be here longer than Freeman at Notre Dame. I yeah, think that's, that's what the ultimate answer was. Yeah, that's fair. It, and just as I'm sure you were hoping uh, Trenton U 15, uh, a good in-depth look at the Mac head coaching situation positions and, uh, you know, long-term prognosis for those positions. Can't wait to see where this next one from Trenton U15 goes. Will this be OSU's best class, 20, uh, class, class of 2022, uh, or will it be class, uh, 2021's class? What do you think? Well, here's the thing, Tom. We could go this through this position by position if you want. I mean, I, is, is that the best way to do it? Because if you start with quarterbacks, I think we all love Kyle McCord. Mm-hmm. But... Quinn Ewers is, by all accounts, the greatest thing that has ever happened. So I think you side 2022 with that one. Am I wrong there? I mean, yeah, just, just based, based on recruiting. Purely and ranking, yeah. it's, they're, they're two five-star quarterbacks, but one is ranked mm-hmm. number one and one is ranked 16 or something like that. So 
Um, yeah, I, I don't know that I would agree with you calling uh, Kyle McCord nothing garbage. I thought that was a little harsh, but you know, I mean, I, I, he does just purely on a on a statistical thing, yes, or a, a pure ranking thing, yes. Quinn Ewers does get the nod there. Uh, running backs, that's a much easier call. Mm-hmm. Trevion Henderson and Evan Pryor for twenty one. Dallin Hayden for twenty two. A perfectly good running back, but not a five star, and also another guy who's a kind of fringy five star. So twenty one gets a pretty good nod there. Yeah, you know, I, 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 you're calling Hayden garbage. I, I disagree with that. <laughs> but he is just one person when the other two are two. And then I think with 21, uh, you, you got to go with the receivers in 2021 with uh, Marvin Harrison and Emeka Egbuka and, and Jaden Ballard over the guys in 22 who are still, uh, there. I believe there are three, three guys, there are three receivers committed in 22, maybe one more to come. But I don't know if I would take any of those two over – Egbuka or Harrison or any of those three over those two. Yeah, I mean, you've got Caleb Burton, who's a five star, but you've got, you know, probably a couple guys who are ranked ahead, would have been ranked ahead of him, you know, in the 21 class. I, that, that 2021 Ohio State wide receiver class was just ludicrous. I mean, just that is that is not realistic to hold any class up to that because you've got, you know, you're looking, if you look at the guys ranked as wide receivers, it's Keon Grays, who's uh, 151 overall, which is kind of like a high four star, Caleb Brown ranked 60th overall he is a four star and Caleb Burton 33 overall that's a five star there are like 128 class programs in the country that would literally kill to have that kind of recruiting class at wide receiver and it's like yes but that's not that's clearly not in the in the, in the same the same stratosphere as 20, 2021 so yes um again I, I think calling them bums was a little harsh but but you know that that's you know you, you'll have to deal with the fallout from that not me let's just agree it's below Ohio State standards. <laughs> <laughs> tight ends at, take, at yeah. tony gerdeman twitter.com <laughs> slash tony gerdeman there you go no no it's all it's all we're just good fun just good fun don't be so serious tight ends i, I gotta go with 2022 because there's two get two kids committed there sam hart will be fine 2021 tight end but two tom more than one it, that is true that is true. We uh, had a post on our ele- on our uh, message board about an elevator this week that that proved that 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 story. So, but that's uh, that's again got to be a Buckeye Scoop member to know what I'm talking about. Tony's just shaking his head. It's because Tony's a member of BuckeyeScoop.com. Uh, what about offensive line? I mean, you twenty you've got four for you've got four for the cl- uh, right now. It looked I think they have four committed. They get well, they got no. They don't have four committed. They have one committed. Taker Shabola. Right. We're we're looking at potentially four mm-hmm. probably being in the class. The question there is, you know, do you have a true left tackle there? But I mean, four guys. But I mean, right, right now, that right now, there's one. So you got to go to a 2021 over 2022, right? Well, I I don't know because you've got three guys in the 2021 class and Donovan Jackson and Zen Mahalski and Ben Chrisman. So are you are you putting all of your eggs in the Zen Mahalski basket then? Well, I mean, right now there's only. Are, are we well, are we projecting? Are we projecting, yes, I'm projecting guys in the class? Yes, okay. I'm projecting. Well, like the guys we think will be in there. Let's project. Yeah. Does D- Donovan Jackson? Is there anyone who ranks ahead of where Donovan Jackson is? No. I, I mean, that's the that's but Jackson the is a guard or a right tackle. Yeah, and and that's like I mean, everybody else. He's probably the top the mm-hmm. top guy there, and then it's just like where where do the other guys slot in? And yeah, I mean, I don't I don't have like a real strong opinion here. Are we pushing? Yeah, I mean, or, I, think, or do you have- I think I think it's it, rather than push. I think it's almost a graded incomplete because we just th- there are a bunch of names that it, we've sort of seen projected mm-hmm. in the class, but with only one of them in, like it's like, well, if two of the three come in, like at that point, like where are you then? So I, I think I'm going to call that one a push. Okay, defensive line is really interesting to me because if Ohio State gets who many think they're going to get in 2022. That's going to be a really, really good class. However, <laughs> if Ohio State gets everybody they think they're going to get in 2021, there's no touch in that because you're talking about Jack Sawyer, JT Tumaloao, Mike Hall, and Tyleek Williams. Those four together are you've got a, it's a defensive line right there. Mm-hmm. And now they're they'll probably sign five guys, maybe six guys in the defensive line for uh 2022 depending on which guys but i time i've spent so much time and effort on this jt to a blowout 
there's no way I'm going to say the 2022 is, is <laughs> bigger and better until he's actually on campus. And then we can push him aside and then start hyping up these 2022 kids. There you go. Yes. No. And, and I mean, you, you're, they're looking at, you know, potentially five-star guys again in 2022, like Amari Abor, people like that, but he's not top five in the nation, like Sawyer and Tuomaloa are. So, yeah, I mean, if, I, I guess you could theoretically have a conversation if Tua Malolo does go somewhere else, but if you know if Tua Malolo mm-hmm. does end up at Ohio State, like that's pretty much like I, you know, I, unless Larry Johnson just gets to go shopping off of the uh, top, you know, off of the five star list, which sometimes it seems like that's what he gets to do, but that is not in fact what he gets to do. Uh, you know, there are some there are some uh, very talented players looking to join that group. It sounds like uh, Chris McClellan from Oklahoma could be imminent to join that group. They've had some very talented players on campus recently, but I don't know that you can match that uh, match that 2021 group. Now, linebackers, linebackers, Tony, I think you go into 2022 on that one because, you know, Gabe Power or CJ uh, Hicks, five star top 20 player in the nation, about the lockiest Buckeye lock that has ever been locked. Um, Gabe Powers, four star, but 38 overall. I mean, just barely just outside five star range. You know, there's some question whether he'll play defense, you know, play with his hand in the dirt at the college level or not. But I mean, that's, you know, he's, he is pretty darn solid. And, you know, I mean, that's, that's two guys right there that already you're, you think you're in pretty good shape. And now, now I'm blanking. They're, they're thinking one more probably, right? Yeah. They're, I mean, they, they just put another offer out like last week. So clearly they're interested in another. And I don't necessarily think that means that Gabe Powers is going to move down to defensive end. Uh, I mean, he's shown out well in the camps and in the workouts as a linebacker. But Ohio State, I saw a picture of the defensive backs for Ohio State, and they've included the bullets in there. So I guess we will do the same, And which means the 2021 class only has Reed Carrico. He's the only linebacker. C.J. Hicks, that star power is going to rise him above. You know, it's kind of like the, the J.T. Tuomloa or the – the Jack Sawyer, just that that kind of star power is uh, worthy of getting that boost. So yeah, I'm I'm with 2022 there, and that's without them even even adding anybody else, which they very well could. But Gabe Powers and C.J. Hicks is a is a pretty good day, and you know I I don't think there's anything 2020 the 2021 class can do now about it. Like I. Because Tom <laughs> signing day was six I was, I was going to say, I, I think it's going to be very difficult to add more than just one, uh, more than just one more player to this class. If uh, unless unless I have been misinformed about signing day, yes. Are, are we counting Pala Ie Naoteote? I don't think we're counting transfers. I think I think recruiting is different than transfers. So I will I, I will agree. say no. All right. All right. And uh, defensive backs, like boy, I kind of want to grade this one incomplete too because yeah. it's like, well, how solidly are. <laughs> Yeah, they've got three real good corners this year. Um, you know, Jaheim Singletary and Jair Brown and uh, uh, Ryan Turner. And it's like, okay, exactly how confident are you that any of the, those individual three guys are going to be in the class? Or specific, maybe more specifically, how confident are you that all three of those guys end up signing with Ohio State? Because it feels like the answer is like, well, if it's 80% for each of them, then that gets you about 50 50 if you do the math so like ah yeah but if if they do land keep those three committed keep kai stokes add uh, xavier nwapa and uh, zion branch that 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 might put me over to the 2022 side over some really good guys in jk johnson and Jordan Hancock, Jansen Dunn, whom I'm a big fan of. Denzel Burke got in early. We've started to see pictures of Andre Turrentine. Mm-hmm. I mentioned Jalen Johnson as a bullet. So there's, I think there's an argument, but at this point, I, I don't think you can intelligently or confidently side with 2022 because you have no idea. It's like you, you don't know if that Lego house you built on the beach is going to be there in December. Yeah, that's that's uh, th- that's maybe the biggest question mark of any of the spots right now. I mean, offensive line, it feels like, yeah, they're either going to get some of these guys or they're not. And if they don't, they're going to get other guys. It's like, well, depends on when, you know, if someone flips, depends on when they flip. I mean, you've 
Ohio State has been in that spot before where it's like they're waiting and they're waiting and they're waiting and the guy flips right before signing day and then they're left, you know, they're left standing with no chair when the music stops. That's they need to not do that this year. That would be a that would be a problem this year. Um, and, you know, I, I feel like I'm projecting safety with where, where there are currently really not any commits. I mean, maybe mm-hmm. maybe one. Um, Kai Stokes. Kai Stokes. Yeah. But I mean, I'm, I feel like I'm projecting safety where there's like one guy who's committed, who's probably going to be a safety with a lot more with a lot more confidence that I am cornerback where there's three guys committed. But it's like, well. I'm pretty sure I know they're going to add two guys at safety. I'm pretty sure they're going to add Zion Branch. I'm pretty sure they're going to add Xavier Nwampa. And at that point, like, yeah, then, then 2022 is, you know, what is probably better than the 2021 class. They haven't committed. They haven't signed. But it seems, it certainly seems like it's trending that direction. So, yeah, I mean, as, as irrational as it is, I probably have a lot more confidence in my 2022 pick for the safety room with one guy committed than I do the 2022 pick for the cornerbacks with three guys committed. So are, are we leaving that off the list? We're just, we're not going to w- w- abstain from voting on that one because the vote should be 2022, but there's, we're not, we don't have the confidence that it's going to be there. Um, and it's not right to give it to 2021 when we feel like if 2022 lands what it should, then they would be better. So are we going to go with 2021 or are we just going to say uh, not enough information? We're going to push it off the table it for a committee. I think, yeah, I think we need to put this in front of some kind of a blue ribbon committee at some point okay. and okay. Uh, cir- circle back. Yeah. And then special teams 2022 doesn't even, does not have an Australian. It, yeah. Zero Australians to one. This is, so, that's easy. Special teams. Okay. 2021. So that gives us uh, the ledger here. 2021 has superior running backs, superior receivers, a superior defensive line and superior special teams, while the 2022 class has a superior quarterback, tight ends, and linebackers. It looks like 2021 wins. However, we have abstained from offensive line and secondary, which could very well go to the 2022 side if things go as planned. So to answer the question, uh, yeah. I guess you'll have to continue listening to the show to find out the answer as things continue to develop. Speaking of which, from Carl's Barkley, when are you or whoever is really in charge here? That's me. <laughs> Changing the name to Buckeye Daily minus Sundays. Can't be weekly if I'm listening to a new episode six days a week. We listeners demand accuracy. And I would, I mean, I think we've talked about this on the show before. We changed the name. We used to have a completely different name for the show that was like a pun on Ohio State's uh, uh, fight song. And we changed it to Buckeye Weekly to make it more obvious what the show is about. And uh, as soon as we change it to Buckeye Weekly, we went, you know, we probably shouldn't just do one show a week. We should do two shows a week. So immediately we were, we have, we gave ourselves a name that was immediately incorrect. Uh, but, you know, I mean, that's, unless we name it to uh, Buckeye poor audio quality, I don't know how much more accurate we could possibly get. So I was thinking of a name change. Uh, how does this sound? What's the frequency Brutus? Hmm. Mm. It's it's a it's a play on the it, how it, frequent it, the the frequency of of the podcast. Although the podcast doesn't have frequencies, but you know <laughs> it's got everything you need, and it's a really timely reference too. So a very very timely pop culture reference. We're just going to be talking about uh, you know like Juan Porter and uh, Greg Belisari and uh, Bobby is, Hoying and yeah yeah. Is this the year Jermon Jackson makes a move? <laughs> maybe maybe. Um, yeah, and and uh, the we do the Buckeye uh, Buckeye Weekly, which is released at least two, sometimes four or five times a week, because you know sometimes there's a bunch of stuff going on, and we just keep, you know, we keep releasing more episodes. And you know what? No one's complaining. So uh, you know, if you if you if you want fewer episodes, we're happy to do fewer episodes. But you keep saying, hey, these episodes are good. You should keep doing them. And we're like, well, there's no accounting for taste. I guess we got to record another episode. So. But I also am the guy who hosts the uh, podcast called The Morning Scoop that releases at like nine o'clock at night the night before. Because, again, I don't feel the need to keep you waiting if you get up in the morning and, uh, you know, you're out running at five in the morning. I don't see any reason to make you wait to get the podcast until 6 a.m. So really, it's just all about you and your convenience. So you're welcome. Um, Are you Uh, sure it's not about you and your convenience? I mean, I could I, I have it done the night before. I could make people wait. But why do that? I'm just, I'm just trying to help. I mean, there are people who work overnights. No, there are not. It's, 
<laughs> Believe it or not, it's true. Yes. When there I'm sleeping. People, <laughs> well, yeah, there are people who work who, who work uh, one to three in the afternoon as well. Yes. Also, when you're sleeping. Yes. Uh, yes. It, it is, in fact, something that does happen occasionally in uh, in some places. So uh, next one from Quad Buck. How much do you think donations slash sponsorships to Ohio State and other smaller schools will decline in the NIL era? I assume that some of that uh, uh, some of that money at least will go to the students directly. How will that impact the number of varsity sports supported by the athletic department? Fifty percent drop. And we've heard a little bit about this, and I think it is a concern that you know from Ohio State's perspective that hey, there's going to be if there's a lot of money going to student athletes from. I mean, I'm just going to use the classic example here of car dealerships, but I mean, you pick whatever, whatever business you want to, that those advertising dollars are coming out of the same budget as the money that used to go to Ohio State. And, and so that's that I think they are anticipating a drop. There's a possibility that they'll be able to claw some of that back through licensing deals like, hey, y- you want to be uh, hi, I'm CJ Stroud of the Ohio State Buckeyes and wear your Ohio State uniform. That's fine. But then Ohio State gets a cut of the licensing. For, you know, for letting you wear your jersey or stand in front of the horseshoe as opposed to just standing in front of a green screen and hold a, you know, or on a generic football field and hold a football or something like that. So it, that's a possibility. I don't think this is going to be any kind of a huge cut. I mean, it, it, you know, 50% drop in, uh, you know, the number of varsity sports supported by the athletic department. I, I don't think they're anywhere close to a 50% cut because, I mean, you've got, you've got to remember, Ohio State still takes in, I mean, what did they make in a typical year? Was it $180 million in the last pre-pandemic year or something like that? $160, $180 million a year. You know, they didn't make that last year. They, they, they probably do not have $180 million of direct expense uh, associated with those varsity sports. There's a little bit of, you know, we have to spend the money, so we're going to spend the money. And you can just not upgrade every single facility every single year. Like, that's a thing you can do if you don't need to spend the money. So I, I don't anticipate Ohio State cutting sports. And when you're with talking about smaller schools, you know, let's talk about Ohio University, for example. How much is Ohio University really going to lose out revenue wise? You know, it's not like the quarterback at Ohio University is going to be making a million dollars a year. He may get a few endorsement deals that are in, you know, the five, ten thousand dollar range, maybe. I mean, you're it just it's a much lower, you know, threshold, a much lower. Uh, amount of money we're talking about. So I don't think, you know, I don't think they're going to be losing a huge, huge chunk of their uh, athletic budgets at, at pretty much any level of the sport. It's going to be some, and and people who say it's going to be none are, are almost certainly wrong, but I don't, I don't think it's going to be something where you're just going to see this bloodbath of, you know, 15 sports getting cut at certain schools. I mean, there's, there's Matt Brown, who I've had on the uh, morning scoop a couple of times. He's written about this. A lot of these like partial scholarship sports, where it's not just, it's a head count thing. It's not a, you know, every football player has a full scholarship. There are a bunch of sports where it's like, well, this, you know, you have, uh, I think it's 12 scholarships for an NCAA baseball team to spread behind between like 36 kids. You, a bunch of those kids are paying tuition. So the university is still getting a bunch of additional tuition money that they wouldn't necessarily get if they weren't getting those, uh, you know, if they weren't doing those 12 scholarships uh, through the NCAA. So there's, there's, uh, I don't, I don't think you're necessarily going to see sports get cut. Clemson just tried to cut a bunch of sports and got a huge pushback and now are kind of reinstating their sports. And, you know, th- there's a whole, that's a real messy situation if you try and cut sports. So I, I don't think that's going to be how that's going to play out. Well, and throughout the entire pandemic, we've seen other programs have to cut some stuff. Ohio State was adamant. Gene Smith was adamant that they weren't going to cut anything and they didn't. Uh, Regarding the small schools, I could see a situation where every once in a while a small school has a big name and they blow up and say, say it would have been like Tyler Tattleton at Ohio, their quarterback. If he had blows up and he that people want him to endorse stuff, that may take some money away from Ohio, but it's going to bring them more from just the awareness. Like everybody's watching Ohio now. There are more eyes on Ohio. Like if if you have a player that blows up and becomes becomes something and now they're on TV and people want to see them. That also boosts up the entire university, the entire exposure of the university. So there's, like, like you said, I don't think it'll affect the small schools, even when somebody blows up. I think it'll still help them. Now, at Ohio State, I do think there will be some loss of, of revenue or, or whatever you want to call it. But I also think the, the wiser investment is always going to be with the university because it 
it's not going anywhere. The players leave, and sometimes you can make bad investments if a player gets in trouble. But by going with the players, you cut out the middleman of the school, and it's much cheaper to just advertise with the players because you don't need to give them $2 million you, you know, that Ohio State is asking for. They will settle for $125,000 and, and get get done what you're trying to do with that 200 that 2 million that would trickle down to Justin Fields being, you know, part of the he's playing on the field that is sponsored by Huntington and Fifth Third and this company and that company and it's like you're trying to tight tangentially tie everything to this one player now you can just have him wear your polo and your hat and it, it's much cheaper so i, I do think there's going to be some issues there and maybe Tom, this is what drives Ohio State to finally go down to D three, like they had talked about in the past. Yeah, almost, almost certainly, the Big Ten is headed to D three after this. How this all goes through, almost unquestionably. And you know, the other thing is to use your example of Tyler Tettleton, another Ohio University quarterback, Nathan Rourke. He was a Canadian. His nickname was Air Canada. Get it? Because he's a quarterback from Canada. Get it? Air Canada. Get it? So anyway, so you know, potentially he's a spokesman for guess what? Air Canada, that is a thing that could happen. He Maybe he becomes a, you know, if he gets some minor endorsement deal for Air Canada for, I don't know, direct flights from Athens, Ohio to Toronto or something. I don't know. But you you have a bunch of companies that are not necessarily donating to Ohio State or giving to Ohio State right now that could be become sponsors for Ohio State football players. You could have, you know, there, there's all sorts of licensing stuff where guys can be making money on video games. You could start selling collectible sports cards now of college players. Like that is a thing that you could do. And if you sell collectible sports cards of college players and they are wearing the Ohio State uniform, well, that's money that is additional money that is coming into Ohio State from the sports collectible card company. That also the players are getting money. I mean, there's there's a bunch of possibilities there. It, it, this is not necessarily like this is not a pure zero sum game. There's there is going to be some additional money that comes into Ohio State as a result of this. There's also going to be some money that's lost to Ohio State because of this. We'll just kind of have to figure out exactly exactly how where those where those lines are relative to each other. Uh, since I spent so much time talking about that one, you can answer the next one, which I don't want to answer. Cairo Buck, if the defense struggles this year, how does Coach Day handle the Kerry Combs job? He is such a great recruiter. Great recruiter. Help, hate to lose him on the staff. Tony. Uh, well, Tom, we don't really have enough time for this uh, this question. We have to go. Um, no, I, I think that you can't keep wasting your time with bad defense and so if the, the buckeyes struggle defensively you have to change things now does that mean it's Kerry combs fault maybe maybe not but you can't just keep doing the same thing over and over again and i don't know that bumping up al washington to a defensive coordinator co dc is is the answer because let's i mean what if the linebackers aren't playing well? I mean, this is a this is going to be a brand kind of a brand new unit of linebackers. Um, if they play outstandingly well, then maybe that's a, a credit to Washington, and he needs to be um, boosted up. Or maybe the secondary plays well, and now it's time to give Matt Barnes that a co DC tag or something of that nature. But if the defensive if the defense struggles again this year, like somebody's got to go and. You can't keep wasting this offense, the the recruiting, the talent. And I, last year is a wash for me. So it's kind of hard to judge a guy on one year. But we have also seen what happens when you judge guys off of two years in the Ed Warner and Tim Beck thing. However, Kerry Combs, I think, has built up more credit and deserves more uh, leeway than those two guys did. I don't, the Tim Beck thing never made sense to me should have never happened ed warner i think he had he earned the offensive coordinator gig because there was nobody else and plus the offensive lines were pretty good it wasn't a lot that urban could do a bad first year they tried to fix it the second year and there were just a lot of issues there so i i don't know that um it's necessarily fair if combs gets the boot after one bad year because i'm not counting last year but I, I think you probably also have to count last year. I think last year at least counts for half of a year. I mean, I, I think there's, there's a whole bunch of, of uh, you know, a whole bunch of reasons to kind of hand wave it. I mean, all the weirdness of the year, plus you had, you had uh, Cameron Brown go down real early in the season. You had all the additional restrictions they were under. 
you can you can kind of write that off to a certain degree right now. And I think you you kind of have to. Now, if it repeats again and you have the same issues, then it's like, okay, then it's a pattern. Then it's it wasn't just the one weird year. It wasn't just, hey, there was no cornerbacks because they were missed, you know. Then then it's a little bit more of a pattern. I, you know, it's I don't think he's Ed Warner. I definitely don't think he's Tim Beck. I mean, you know, Ed, Ed Warner was the Peter principle where you get promoted to the point where then you're incompetent and then you're, you're in a job where you're incompetent and then you get fired. Tim Beck is like the, I mean, the Brian Van Gorder principle where it's like, this guy's been terrible everywhere. Why does he keep getting jobs? You can call it the Brian Van Gorder principle, the Scott Leffler principle, the, um, uh, oh shoot, who is uh, Bob Diaco principle. Yes. I mean, like all of these things, it's just like, what, how, how does, what? How does this guy keep getting hired? He's been bad everywhere. So yes, I that that was Tim Beck to me. Ed Warren, I think, just got overpromoted. Kerry Combs, I, I I think you have to grade him incomplete right now. And it almost matters how, you know, if it doesn't go well this year, it almost matters how it doesn't go well. If it doesn't go well in the same way, I think that tells me a lot more than, you know, hey, they had issues at linebacker this year because the linebackers are real young. I mean, like 2017, there, there were some linebacker issues on that team. That's a different, you know, if it's a different problem this year, that almost suggests something different to me than if it's the same problem again. And it's like, okay, this very clearly hasn't gotten fixed, especially because this is the area where you have your basis in coaching. You know, Kerry Combs is not the cornerbacks coach anymore, but, you know, he, he's, he does, he's not like specializing in cornerbacks anymore. He's the defensive coordinator, but this is the area where, which you know best. So if that area continues to struggle in the same way that it did last year, that's a concern to me. So yeah, I, I I think you're right. I think you kind of give them an incomplete for last year. But if the pattern continues, that's probably somewhat significant. So, uh, I, I you know, I, I don't think he's going to get an extra year of grace. He, he probably get, got a year of grace after last year. But, it you know, it's the don't do that again. That's that's probably about where that is right now. Well, then what is what is good enough? What is bad enough? Because to me, like, you should have one of the best defenses. You should have the best defense in the Big Ten. You should certainly have one of the best defenses in the Big Ten. And if you're middle of the pack, I don't know that that's good enough to, but is, is it bad enough to be fired? Like, it, it, you know, do you like the lukewarm water? You know, I, I don't know that Day is, is interested in that, but of course we will see. Yeah. And uh, last one from Buck Wrestler 141 uh, Concerns on your most recent JTT Commitment Watch Pod video. There is a reference to a poster thinks he could be holding off until July 1st for NIL sponsored commitment video. Just looking for my proper educated guest credit when he has a sponsored commitment video drop on Thursday, or I'll be forced to throw up my arm, own arm, patting myself on the back. From Buck Wrestler 141. Well, you know, I don't know who this guy thinks he is. When I mentioned that I saw somebody on the board say this, and then I use it, and then I talk about it, I'm giving credit to myself for seeing it on the board. Right. I mean, he didn't, he didn't bring it to the podcast. I didn't hear his I, I, voice saying it. I don't, I don't know who else is supposed to be the hero of this story. Yeah, exactly. So um, great job. You had your question read on, on, on the podcast. Uh, go pat yourself on the back for that. Look, <laughs> I don't need people to give us questions to ask on this show so that we can create content and original thoughts. We don't need that. Uh, so I, uh, actually, actually, I think we're, we're probably going to do another one of these shows on Thursday. So you should probably, probably take that back. Oh, I will. We'll, we'll save this uh, rant for after we're done with the second show of listener questions about how we don't need your listener questions. But we've actually gotten a bunch that so might actually stretch into next Tuesday. So you might want to hold off again, even, even on Thursday. In August, once football <laughs> season starts. I won't be needing your questions and Tom won't be needing your questions. So you can take your question now and, and we will read it and we will answer it. And we will thank you now, not later. You can forget about that down the road. Anything yeah. Else, Tell them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think that'll do it then. Uh, thank you guys for listening. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Uh, thank most of you for your questions. They were appreciated mostly. Uh, and, and <laughs> It's always a good time to to do these because, um, you know, no Langdon Alger. He didn't have to chime in with any questions. There's a bunch of questions, and we're going to be getting through these for a while. And but we will have other shows as well. Like if stuff happens, say if oh I don't know, somebody were to commit, maybe we would talk about that. Maybe, maybe it depends. It depends. We'll see. We'll see if we have time. 
We, <laughs> yes, we will see. So we don't want to put out too many episodes this week and confuse true. anyone. Right. It's what's the frequency, Brutus? No, still nothing. How about mm-hmm. we call it mm-hmm. Jeremy? Just because we've spoken. <laughs> All right, let's go. Uh, all of the kids are like, I don't, I don't understand your Rolling Stones references. <laughs> so, all right, that'll do it. Thank you guys for listening. Reminder to check out BuckeyeScoop.com. Not yet a member, become a member. Things are going to get a little bit wild. So thank you guys. We will talk to you later.